Yes, welcome back into another edition of The Jungle Show. So excited to be back to discuss another Auburn Tigers win here on the Auburn Daily's YouTube channel and podcast feed. Again, so excited to be back. We're here to talk about Auburn's second straight road SEC dominating win, this time over the South Carolina Gamecocks. A score of 81 to 66. Auburn was in control of this game from the very beginning and never wavered. And, um, and we're, we're here to talk about it. Here to talk about some of the takeaways and some of the storylines for this game and around the program, and then preview what Auburn has next on this upcoming Wednesday and in Neville Arena against Texas AM. Before we get started, um, I just wanted to remind y'all that this season Auburn Daily has partnered with Prize Picks to bring some fun and variety to your picks for 2023. Prize Picks is a free app that allows you to choose any two to three, four, five, maybe even six of any sport in your wagers. Predict the over-under for the next game and win big prizes if they do well. They have flex options where you can still get paid on winning three of five or two of three, and you can have multiple sports in the same parlay. Best of all, use promo code Auburn to receive double of your first deposit up to $100. That's promo code Auburn on your first deposit. This college basketball season, win some big money with prize picks at Auburn Daily. Again, use promo code Auburn to get double on your first deposit up to $100. So with that being said, talking about prize picks, Auburn was a 13 and a half point favorite in this game. If you bet the Auburn Tigers in that game, you would have won because Auburn won by 15 points. So to do that and to talk about this good Auburn Tigers win, over South Carolina, I brought in my dad and co-host again. Dad, a 15-point dub on the road after an 18-point dub on the road. This is the second time or the or the first time Auburn has had back-to-back road victories in the SEC by more than 10 points since the early 80s. This was a big deal for Auburn, no matter the two opponents of LSU and South Carolina this week. What did you what did you get from this game? Anytime you win on the road in the Southeastern Conference, it's a big deal. Yeah. Um, no to win back to back road games in dominant fashion, uh, even against poor teams, is big time. And like you said, it's been a long time since we were on, we won back to back road games by double digits. Yeah. We were in complete control of this game, uh, never wavered. They did get it to 10 early in the yeah. second, cut a 26 point lead to 10. And I was like, what? <laughs> Come on, yeah. guys, let's guard Gigi. Uh, yeah. he's the, literally the only one scoring. And uh, and Bruce made some switches there and extended it back out. They were, we were never going to lose that game. That was, I agree, that was fun to watch. Yeah, hundred percent. No, I, mm-hmm. I, I, we were talking about this pre-show before we started recording. I haven't had as much fun watching Auburn basketball these past two games in a, a since that tournament run. To be honest with you, you know, I had a lot of fun watching last year's team. Last year's mm-hmm. team was dominant in a lot of games that they played, especially when they were really rolling. They got up to number one in the country, but this, this, these past two games. Winning on the road, winning a who who you beat in LSU and South Carolina, and also the context of what we saw against Florida and Georgia, and even got even games like the USC game and the Memphis game. Seeing this Auburn team perform at this level is refreshing to me. I I, I told you before the show that last five minutes of the first half, and maybe the first three minutes of the second half, were as good of basketball as I've seen Auburn play maybe since the 2019 run. Yeah. Um, they were, uh, it, everything was clicking. They were running. They were making passes. Win green was making passes like I've never seen before, yeah. I guess, since Sharif Cooper. Um, and, and Alan Flanagan was flying through the air and uh, uh, J- uh, Janai Broom has, has developed that little push shot from about 13 feet. That's that was going in, and it was like everything we did was working. Yeah. Uh, and, and then about midway through the second half, like I said, uh, uh, Jackson, who is an NBA player, yep. he'll be in the NBA next year. Yep. Uh, is he? Uh, he's a six nine shooting guard, 
and he took over for them, and he's very good. He's yeah. very <laughs> Wow, he's very good. Would yeah, love to have before, had him on our team. <laughs> yeah, now before we talk about you know the storylines and some of the takeaways we've had for Auburn in this game, one huge point of emphasis from just looking at the stats in this game. If, if you even if you didn't watch it, just looking at the stats, but especially if you watched it, the GG Jackson impact is something else. He was the only player for South Carolina in this game. He finished with 30 points shooting almost 50% from the field, 50% from three, had four threes and eight rebounds. He was minus 25 in this game. Now, I, I credit that to a lot more of Auburn having, you know, he was out there when Auburn was cooking Auburn at their best, best during this yeah. game. But Gigi Jackson originally committed to North Carolina. Auburn really, really wanted him, especially after he mm -hmm. decommitted from North Carolina, decided to stay at home. He's from Columbia. Uh, especially since he reclassified, like he is 17 years old. He's the age of a high school senior. That's, I mean, uh, he's really he's, good. He's going to be playing for a lot of money next year. At, at yeah. The NBA. Uh, you know, they were talking on, I was listening to the Auburn radio network because I can't stand that guy. They call doc on ESPN or whatever. Um, <laughs> so I timed up my Auburn radio network and listened to them call the game. And, uh, and they kept saying, Gigi, I wonder if he'll be back next year. And I was like, he'd no be way. crazy to be back. No chance. He's a top 10 type of draft pick. He's really good. And yeah. and he's a guy that NBA teams go, ooh, 6'9", can handle the ball, likes he's to handle run. the ball, yeah. can shoot, yeah. uh, can take it to the bucket. Uh, he he I, I, We talked about it before. A lot of these teams in the SEC have one or two NBA, NBA players. players. Yep. Um, I don't think we do yet. Uh, we're getting the chance again, keeps playing hard. Maybe he's an NBA player next year. Jalen Williams. Yep. If he can, if he can show that he can handle the ball and I think he can, yep. maybe he's an NBA player next year, but, but the Jackson kids, an NBA superstar. He's yeah. really good. 100%. Yeah. So, all right, now moving on, pivoting towards the Auburn Tigers here in this game. I yes. look, uh, pure masterclass, not just from the guy that we, we're going to talk about here in just a second specifically, but just in general, 81 points. You shoot three of 17 from the three-point line, which is terrible. 18% is not good from Auburn from the three-point line, but yet you score 81 points on the road to the SEC. That shows you how dominant this team was in this game and has been finding their stride and their consistency lately, and it, it's working. It's working. Hey, it, to score 81 points making three threes, you're right. That's that's something that you go, how, how did that even happen? Well, it happened because we had a big man. They did not. Yep. Uh, and and we knew it going in. Obviously, the that was the the um, scout no. uh, was to get it to, to the big man early and often. The first two plays of the game were him dunking the ball yep. and – and from then on, it was they tried to guard him with the with the white guy with the braids. I don't know his yep. name, but I think he was around six seven or six eight. He was just bigger than whoever they had that it was tall. Yeah. And they thought, let's try to bully him. Well, he made him look like a child out there. Yeah. No matter who is out there, Janai Broom established himself as the bigger, better, stronger more athletic, better player than whoever was guarding him and whoever was on the floor for South Carolina at the time. Janai Broom, 12 of 17 from the field in this game, 27 points. He went three of three from the free throw line, which is amazing to see. That's unbelievable. Had really good looking free throws. Yeah, yeah. Had, had 11 rebounds. And I'm going to you know, get some more stats. Two of them were offensive. He had two blocks, and in his 30 minutes was plus 16 overall and it gave me one by 15 the he look we're not trying to compare the previous defensive player of the year in the, no. in the country to no. Janai broom and walker kessler to Janai broom but when you strictly based on offense uh, based on the offensive ability to score uh, 27 a game you know, we, we haven't seen that yet from Janai Broom, but we knew that was possible because of what he did at Moorhead State. You know, we mm -hmm. saw I mean, even in the, 
the OVC championship against KJ Williams from oh, LSU, where he had 32 points and eight rebounds. We we're like, okay, what if we get that at Auburn? What mm-hmm. if he can do that at Auburn? We talked about all preseason. He's going to be the guy you throw the ball to. If shots aren't going down, you throw the ball to for an automatic bucket. That's exactly what we saw in this game against South Carolina. 12 of 17, 27 points, 11 rebounds. Is a dominating performance worthy of uh, our player of the game, no doubt. But uh, what did you see from Janai? So a couple things. You just mentioned a, a, a comparison to Walker Kessler. He's not Walker Kessler. On the defensive end. Walker Kessler's not Jani Broom on the offensive end, though. Mm -hmm. Uh, Early on, and he does this move a lot, uh, He back to the basket, uh, drop drop step spin to the baseline. He hooks a lot, and he probably did on this one, but they didn't call it. And Walker Kessler's never going to do that move. He doesn't have the quick quick feet like Jani has. Jani has really quick feet. Um, so that move was spectacular, yeah. but that push shot, that little 12 foot push shot when, when teams are zoning us and they're going to zone us because we made three, three pointers. If you play us man to man, you're crazy. Uh, I can guarantee you after last year in the tournament and watching us play this year, uh, Texas A&M will run zone. I'd oh, be the entire time if they played yeah. man. So, but what we can do now against that zone that we couldn't do last year is run Jalen or Janai to that 12 foot where the logo is and to push it up there, push it up there. Yeah. It's an incredible shot. Um, the other thing I noticed about Janai that was a little different than usual. We always talk about uh, when Dylan Carbwell's in the game, the pick and roll is a pick and roll. When Janai yeah. has been in the game, it's been a pick and pop. Not in this game. Janai had two alley dunks. One of them he had to reach back for one handed. And and I was like, oh wait, Janai can do that that's alley not, dunk. That's being Great more passes aggressive. by Wendell, but but oh, I like seeing it. Uh he all uh, Dylan also had one, but um Janai Janai changes things if he can make that 12 to 15 footer. Because then he can also go by you. He's he's quick enough to drop step and spin one way yeah. and get around you. So yeah. real encouraging game. And they yeah. they didn't have anybody to guard him. No, I, no, I, no. Admittedly, they yeah. they didn't have a big that was anywhere close to Janai. I think the point that you made about that little twelve to thirteen foot jump or push shot that when you're in the middle of the zone, you're on the short corner baseline area that he can just catch it and kind of toss it up there with his right or left hand. And not only that, but having two guys with that ability mm-hmm. will be special, especially against teams that will zone you, which just like you said, teams are going to zone you, especially because you're struggling from the three-point line. They have to. They have to. And you know Buzz Williams and Texas a will come in on Wednesday with a zone the entire game. The only way they do not zone you, especially because just like you mentioned – not South Carolina didn't have a big that could guard. I mean, Henry Coleman's going to be Henry Coleman is a good defensive big for Texas A&M. Mm-hmm. He's big. But I don't think he can guard Janai Broom. You're not quick enough. It, not man to man. He's not yeah. quick enough, just like you said. So especially teams who don't have a big that they feel confident guarding Janai, they're going to zone you. So having not only Janai but Jalen and Allen and and. Even a guy like maybe we'll talk about this guy in a second, but maybe Treyor to have that ability, it would be great. It would be special. So. Yeah, look, and and Jalen didn't have it going as well in this game. He, yeah. he missed his three pointers, um, but I still want him shooting that, and and his little push or hook shot in the middle of the lane is yeah. perfect against the zone. Sure. We look at a team that plays zone all the time in Syracuse. It's the easiest zone to break if you just run the guy. If you have a guy that can shoot, we did it last year against Syracuse with Jabari in the middle and Walker down low. And we've got a guy that isn't as good at handling the ball as Jabari was, but he doesn't need to be. He catch it in there. If they don't come up and guard him, he's going to push that thing up. And made he made like four of them in this game. Yeah. He actually made he made twelve shot twelve two point 
shots and uh, South Carolina made 20 two point shots the entire game. Wow. Hey, that's crazy. That's a crazy stat. About. Yeah. That is crazy to think about. So, yeah, but just like you mentioned about Jalen, uh, Jalen had 12 points and six rebounds in this game, a, a really good game for Jalen. Mm-hmm. But, it, you know, went 0 of 2 from 3. We'll talk about this with Wendell. Wendell went 1 of 4. Those threes are going to fall. You know, especially as confidence grows, especially, <laughs> well, yeah, especially, but even if you get into ne- Neville Arena, like those threes are going to fall. You think they're going to, because they're good, for, they're good looks. They're, they're all great wide looks. open. None of those looks that we had in this game were really, really bad. And from anyone, by the way, I don't think anybody had a bad look. I think Zepp's look was good. I think Allen's two looks were good. Mm-hmm. And I think Treor's five looks were all good pretty look. good. Yeah. Yeah. I think Lior's look from three from the corner was good as well. So there wasn't a bad three shot. I just think they they got a fall, but you got a safety blanket engine eye room to help you with that. It's what we talked about. It's what we talked about all offseason. Yep. That Walker was not that safety blanket. Walker was the rebounder and the and the defender. Yep. Um Janai's a safety blanket. He can go post up and he can most of the time make a good enough move to to score or get fouled. And yeah. if he's making free throws, those are bonus. That's bonus. Okay. 100%. He's not a good free throw sh- or he wasn't no, he's and now he's been much better. Can we can we bring up one thing here? Mm-hmm. KD Johnson. He had a fast break three-point shot that he was going to shoot. Yeah. And he stopped I think I'm pretty sure it was on the fast break. It was on the fast break. Stopped, yeah. hesitated. The guy came running out at him, and Katie went right around him and made a layup. How about and I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I bet Bruce Pearl and, and Stephen Pearl are like, yes, finally. <laughs> he faked a three and took it to the bucket because the guy ran at him. Yeah. It's well, like, I would have like, run at him, too. Easy layup. Yeah. I that's big time. If we can keep him doing that sort of thing, that's a, that was a really cool play. So, yeah. So let's talk about the other guy who had a double double in this game. Auburn had the, had two players in double doubles in SEC play for the first time. And since 2014, 2013, 2014 season, and we're close to having three guys with a double double. If Alan Flanagan would have scored two more points, because Flanagan had eight points and ten rebounds, and we'll talk about Allen in here in just a second. But let's talk about Wendell. You know, we mentioned I mentioned just a second ago about you know he went one of four from the three point line. Those threes are going to fall, especially when we get in Neville Arena. Uh, that's I'm not worried about that. All four of those are good looks. One of them he drilled. It was a great shot. I don't want to talk about his scoring, even though his his ability to drive the basket, his mid range game has gotten unbelievably better let's talk about his pass 12 assists all 12 of them were circus type of assists and were outstanding pinpoint accuracy type passes who he's just he's gotten better and better and better even you know even from last year at his passing well i want to talk i want to do this i want to lay this question out for you as of right now from the 12 games you saw from sharif cooper in an auburn uniform to what mm. you've seen from Wendell Green so far, and Wendell Green's not done. Wendell Green's not a, an NBA player right now, so I expect Wendell Green to be in an Auburn uniform next year. Mm-hmm. With the potential, including the potential that Wendell has, what in terms of just passing, who, who do you think is a better passer, Sharif or Wendell? And look, I'm not, look, I'm not saying Sharif in the NBA. Look, Sharif, Sharif, Sharif was a was an elite college passer. Yeah, because of his handles, he could handle it so well, and it was on a string, and he yeah. could he could it's make passes well. off the off the bounce either hand. What Wendell's doing right now is at least comparable. Yeah, um, the passes the other day were like you said, most of them were circus passes. Most of them when he was off balance. Yeah, some uh, of the full court passes. Too. Full court the passes. One of them the bounce passes. pass. Both of them to Flanagan. The, uh, the, the I don't understand how he dribbles to the left and throws a lob to the right hand side of the bucket from the other side of the lane. Uh, he 
he is become. <laughs> I name a better point guard in the SEC. I you know, I was just about to ask you this, and it was because I don't see another point guard having as big of an impact on a team than Wendell Green. And I'm not just talking about the SEC. I'm talking about in the country. Mm-hmm. I'm. Including when you think about best point guards, I immediately think is the Kai Ziegler at Tennessee. Mm-hmm. He's had an That's incredible year, year, but yeah. I don't think he has the impact that he does as Wendell Green does on this Auburn team. You think about Mark Sears at Alabama, he's having a great year, but has been highly inconsistent, a lot like Green was in the non conference and the Georgia game yeah. and yeah. last year, but he's not having near of an impact because he he really doesn't need to have an impact no, they with, got the, with number 24 got on that team. NBA all-star on that team. So I do think Wendell is the most impactful player, point guard in the SEC, and you can talk about him being top three in the country in terms of when he's on the court, when he's playing well, this team's going to – this team is a contender. When he's not, this team shouldn't be in the tournament. When he's playing kind of iffy, this team's a bubble mm-hmm. team. He is. He makes that impact, and he shows that night in and night out. And if he keeps his consistency, not only scoring, yeah. getting better from his outside shot, just keep improving that, but he keeps passing the ball like this, Auburn's a contender, not yeah, just he, for the SEC, but for the title. He uh, Since the Georgia game, the, he was bad in the Georgia game. I, I don't know where that came from. I don't know what happened. Um, I don't know if he was sick that day. Maybe his girlfriend was yelling at him. I don't know. <laughs> but but he was bad in the Georgia game. And ever since then, he has been consistently fantastic. fantastic. Yeah. He's had, what, what's that, four straight, five straight now? Yeah. Five straight games where he's games. he's been great. You're getting almost 20 points. You're you're getting almost double digit assists. You got 12 the other night. Granted, he turned the ball over four times, but I'll take three to one assist to turnover ratio. Yes. I, I, I'll take that every night from him. Um and he and again, we're up eight or ten with five minutes left. I'm pretty confident because they're gonna have to start fouling. And the guy with the ball is either him or Zep. And he missed the free throw the other night for the first one in, what, 25? And it broke his string of 25 free throws yeah. made in a row. Um, I'm confident that when Green is a closer, and I look, he I can't say enough good things about him. Last year, I loved when, but he was really inconsistent. And it That's hurt That's why us. he came off the bench. Yeah. It hurt us. Um this year, he's been ex- except for one game. Yeah, he's been completely consistent. So uh, he's turned into a really good defender. Uh, as long as he doesn't get beat back door, um, he uh, look. I, I, he is the uh, you know the after the Miami game, Coach Pearl said it was going to be Jalen Williams' team, and Coach Pearl will still say that, and yeah. a lot of it's true. Yeah. This is Wendell Green's team. Yeah. This is when he's point guard one. He, he's he's one and happen. he is yeah. he's he is leading this team. Yeah. There's and, not many um when you look around college basketball, especially this year, but even in past years, there's not a lot of players you can point to on a team and specifically say that they're the reason that they either win or lose. They're mm-hmm. the reason they either win big, win small, lose small, or lose big. Yeah. Wendell Green is exactly That's that. that. And you haven't seen that with Auburn in a while because a, a Jabari's worst game last year, we went he went three of 15 from the field at Missouri, and we won. <laughs> Thank KD's you, Katie worst, Johnson. <laughs> KD's worst game last year, he went 0 of 14. Against we Texas A&M, we lost by five. Mm-hmm. There, there, so there wasn't an extreme impact from one certain player outside of more than one game. Yeah. Wendell Green is, is making impacts every single game. It is the reason that we're 
successful or not successful game in and game out, even if he doesn't have 27 points, 11 rebounds like Janai or 12 points and six rebounds like Jalen or eight points and 10 rebounds like Alan Flanagan or eight points like Yoan Treor. You can't, you can't, you know, minimize his impact that he makes on the floor. Probably. By the way, most of those points from Janai came from Wing Green. Exactly. Uh, exactly. I mean, no, I was most, looking most came I wasn't, directly from Win. Yeah, no, for the YouTube listeners, I wasn't looking at the screen because I was trying to find the stat of points responsible for. And that's a big thing when it comes to for point guards because you count the assist, that that score, you get your points, you get your your outlet passes, you get uh, everything that you're the reason that they score, mm-hmm. you're, you, you're part of the score, you get credit for. And I, I, I want to find the stat of – and, and I, I don't know where I would find it. And that's the problem. Is how many of Wendell Green's, how many of Auburn's eighty-one points was Wendell Green responsible for? I got, I, I bet it's at least half, minimum. Yeah, yeah, and that's I, crazy. It, it, that's crazy. But you're right. It's he was, stuff. he was fantastic. So, moving on to talk about a little bit. So obviously, Chris Moore still out with an injury. He did warm up to complete. The extent in this game, which is great. Mm-hmm. Usually that's a sign that hopefully a player will return soon. Hopefully we might see him return to the lineup or rotation against Texas A&M. If not, maybe he'll travel to Morgantown and, and play mm-hmm. at West Virginia on Saturday. So Alan Flanagan into the starting spot. I think he's established himself as the starting spot. I think I would rather have Chris Moore there because I want Allen coming off the bench. But that being said, Right now, when South Carolina made their run to cut it to 10, the lineup yeah. consisted of Trey Donaldson, Leo Berman, Katie Johnson, Johan Treor, and Dylan Carbo, which is your current bench lineup right now with Alan Flanagan into the starting lineup with Chris Morby. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So from that five, who is your scorer? We've seen Trey. Trey can do it. Trey, we know Trey can score. He hasn't scored a lot lately, but we know he can score. I don't think his role to is to score yet. Yeah, no, I don't either. Um, I would say know, KD, but we know I mean, KD can recently. score. We yeah. know KD can score. We know KD can score at bunches because we saw it last year and we've seen it, you mm-hmm. know, a little towards the beginning of this year. We just need him to be more consistent. Need him to get that KD confidence and swag back. And once he does, I think he could be that guy. Obviously, you'll thrust either Chris Moore or Leroy Berman into that. I think Berman could, Berman's going to be a shooter, but he could be a liability defensively. And Chris Moore may not score a lot, but he's going to be one of the best defenders on the team, if not the mm-hmm. best. Mm-hmm. Where's your score? Dylan Carbell's not going to score <clears throat> six, eight points a game. That's not going to. That's not. That's not going to come from Dylan unless we're getting lob after lob after lob. Which yeah, I would unless love. they're defending him. Where does that scoring come from? Do you install confidence in your five star from this past year, who we've seen struggle and struggle and feel like he's not fitting and not knowing where he's at and struggling to get confidence of his offense and his shot and his defense and not not having an effort rebounding and that sort of thing? Do you instill confidence? And Yoan Treor, let him get eight points in this game, bury two threes, get ten minutes in a dunk. Two threes in a really nice breakaway dunk. To establish him as that bench scorer. Because he's not coming to the starting lineup. Jalen Williams is the starting of the four. Alan Flanagan, I believe, has established himself as the starting at the three. If he keeps playing like this, I think we keep him there because I don't know how well you thrust Chris Moore back in there after his injury, even though I'd be, I would be fine with that either way. Letting you I would on love, score I would and love become that bench that. score. Uh, that, I think that needs to be the, I think that needs to be the move. Uh, I would love to see that. Um, Trey is still learning a new position. He, this is not, he didn't play the four in high school. He played a yeah. everything five. Um, and, and a shooting five, he can make the three. Uh, he likes that corner three boy. If yep. he gets it there, he's launching it, yep. uh, made two of them, uh, should have made the third one. I thought the third one was good too. It was a good look. 
looked like it was going in. Uh, had the breakaway dunk. Was not didn't look lost on either end. He's looked lost in the past few weeks. Yep. Um, I, I'm glad Bruce played him and, like you said, gave him the 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 confidence to go ahead and shoot, especially in a game that we were going to win no matter what. Basically, uh, get him in there, get him some confidence, let him. Uh, if 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 we could get eight to ten a game out of him, would it be Johan? Uh, it'd be I'd be perfect. It'd be perfect. Yeah. So he it just got to be more aggressive. I I think he's got it. We saw it in Israel. Yeah. Um. And and he's he's tall. He's long. He's got all the attributes. Yeah. yeah. Um. The difference his five star rating and Gigi Jackson's five star rating is so different though. I they're not even the same league. Uh, Gigi Jackson is polished compared to Johan Traor. So we've got to get some polish back on or on him and get him some confidence. The more confident he got, the better he was playing the other day. Yeah. And I think I think that goes not just for Traor, but for KD. That way for Allen. I mean, you see the difference between Allen this year and last year. That's Mm -hmm. pure confidence and fit. I agree. That's pure confidence and fit. I mean, I, Janai Brew exceeds confidence. Just confidence just boils <laughs> off of him and walking to the store. I mean, that, that, that's what Janai is all about. If you can yeah. get guys on your bench like KD, like probably Chris Moore when he comes back, like Trey, like Yoan, their confidence, knowing their roles and ex- exceeding in them, it's, mm-hmm. it's just going to get better and better for Auburn. So. It needs to because it's going to get tougher and tougher. Yeah, and that that being said, let's talk about what's next for this Auburn basketball team. Auburn comes home to finish out January uh, in Neville Arena on Wednesday and then goes to um, Morgantown to play against West Virginia in the SEC Big 12 Challenge on Saturday. That will finish out this you know, interesting month for January mm-hmm. for Kentucky. For Texas A&M, the game on Wednesday night at 8 o'clock in Neville Arena, obviously it will be good for Auburn to get back in Neville Arena where they played Mississippi State last. Texas A&M has had a weird start to the year. Did not play that well in non-conference. Had some really eh, questionable losses. Uh, Boise, The Boise State loss was questionable. They, they also lost to Memphis. They lost to Wofford at home. I, got really, blown really, out really by Colorado, really, didn't they? Got blown out by Colorado. So some yeah. really questionable losses, but some pretty solid wins. I mean, they beat Loyola Chicago. They beat SMU. They beat Oregon State. And then they come into SEC play and start off 5-0 and yeah. with some big wins over Texas A&M, LSU, Missouri. Not over South A&M, Carolina, that's them. Against, Florida, oh, against two wins against Florida, one yeah. against Missouri, one against LSU, one against South Carolina. And then – they go to Rupp and lose this past Saturday. Um, so it's so a weird start to see, just a, a, just a very odd start for Texas A&M. Mm-hmm. And it's just it's very it's similar just to weird. last year's start, by the way. Exactly. They started off hot last year and fell off the map yep. at this point in the season. Yep. Um, so, I, and, I hope and, they fall off the map and lose their second straight coming up Wednesday that the crowd needs to be there because uh, the kids need encouragement on their shooting because they're going to get, a, we're going to get open looks. They're going to give you open looks from yeah. three. They're, they want you to not be able to get into the lane. Uh, that's the way they're going to play defense. Um, uh, Kentucky got hot. Kentucky made 11 three pointers Saturday to beat them. Is that the most that they've made all year? They've made, yeah. Kentucky made 11 and AM, I think, made three. That's 33 to nine difference in three pointers. And AM lost by what? Eight? Nine. Nine. So it's 24 points difference in three pointers, if my math is good. Yep. And you only lose by nine. I, I feel like I, I feel like they will give you the three. You just gotta make it. And Kentucky yeah. made it, and Kentucky won. Uh, <laughs> if you don't, <laughs> I don't know. 
I don't know. I, I A&M's good enough to beat us. They're yeah. they're better in South Carolina. They're better in LSU. Uh, they're better in Florida. They beat Florida twice. They held Florida to 12 points in the first half the other day. Yeah. Now yeah. Florida came back and made that a game, but they will rebound and try to muck it up and try to make it a dirty, nasty, physical basketball game. And he's yeah. a good coach. Now they're going to come in. He'll guard play zone. Yeah. Yeah. Buzz Williams will be on the floor. He will be their sixth man, just like they do with the 12th man in football. <laughs> yeah. They will be, they, he will have a six man. He will be out guarding on the floor. If you don't know that reference, look at the. Um, watch any of his games. Watch any of the games. He's always in defensive position. It's not like he's standing there. Right in next defensive to the player. Position, right next to the <laughs> opposing player. I mean, out there. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like Buzz. You're literally next to our shooting guard. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. It is weird. weird. I I like Buzz. I think he's a good coach. I I, I like to listen to him talk, but, but I want him to lose badly Wednesday night. So I want another game like that one. Yeah. Not only is, will Auburn play Texas A&M on Wednesday, but they'll also play them in two weeks in college stations. You Mm -hmm. get to, Matchups against a Texas a and team who you are tied with in the SEC right now. Yeah, that's right. Second. Tied for second. You Tennessee and te- you Tennessee and Texas A&M are tied for second in the SEC, only behind Alabama, who's undefeated. This is a huge opportunity to not only take a step uh, right before the SEC Big Twelve Challenge, but also knock one of your foes who's out right there the with you mm-hmm. down. They're out uh, out of your running currently. And then in February it gets started, and it is a bloodbath for Auburn. I mean, you start yeah. off with your revenge game against Georgia next Wednesday, mm-hmm. and then you go to Knoxville. And you get Texas A&M again, just like I said. Away. Away. And then you get probably coming in the number one team in the country, the Alabama Crimson Tide. So it, it just gets harder and harder for Auburn. And the – this is going to be a good test. This week is this it. week is very very vital to see where this Auburn team is at. You get a big matchup, just like we said, against Texas A and M, and then a big road test against Press Virginia. You're going to get pressed the entire time. Which, which, by the against. way, by the way, I watched them play the other day. I watched yes. their game against Texas. They didn't press Texas at all. Mm. They trapped half court. They trapped them, but they didn't press them at all. And I was like. Well, this is weird. This is not what I'm expecting. A um, couple things. You you want to get wins that you can get while you can get them. Had to beat South Carolina. Had to beat LSU. Had to beat Ole Miss. A&M is one that at home you can get. Defend yep. your home court. Get you it. have the longest active home winning streak in the country. By Gonzaga. Yep. And now well, it's America. time to stand on that and keep pushing it up. Uh, and yes, you'll face the number one team in the country in a couple weeks in that building. Across that, the state. They're That's really good. good. Yeah, they're, really good. they're so, really good. But getting off of that, we will be back next week or, or for Friday. Friday to discuss. Yeah, we'll, we'll be back Friday to discuss this game against Auburn or to discuss Auburn's game against Texas A&M and then do a little short preview just like we did for the A&M game about the West Virginia game on Saturday. So hope you all enjoyed for the YouTube listeners subscribe and like down below. If you want to find us on Share. Twitter, just find us on Twitter at Gray Oldenburg or at War Eagle hoops or find the amazing stuff on Twitter at the Auburn daily, or you just visit auburndaily.com. We will be back to discuss all that uh, more Auburn basketball at another time. Thank you all for listening. War Eagle. War Eagle. Thank you.